eat up it's called ruby yeah and i love this food appetite and eating what you want this is great it's like your manifesto it is <laughs> yeah it is in a sense yeah i wish it wasn't a manifesto i wish all this stuff was just common sense and just yeah, out yeah. there but we, we've kind of lost our way with food we have we've got this and so many women and young men as well have got this really skewed relationship with food as if somehow food is the enemy yes you know, yeah. We've made it the enemy. We've made it something to, to be concerned about and worried about. We have. And do you know what we, we do? We do this weird pulling of food in opposite directions. So, like, I read this really funny thing about fat being taken out of milk to make skimmed milk, so healthy and wonderful and virtuous, and then put into luxury ice cream. So we find ourselves, like, swinging between <laughs> the ends of the spectrum. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. It's been something I've been saying for ages. Diets don't work. No denying yourself things just makes you want it more and if you go on a fatty diet yes you lose weight you'll put it all back on again when you go back to normal eating yeah. whatever that is yeah <laughs> and it's such a shame because we're, we're kind of sold so many promises about diets and not only just like you'll lose the weight but when you lose the weight you're going to get the glow you're going to sure. be revitalized and you're not going to get the glow unless you're eating literal light bulbs you know it doesn't work <laughs> that way like that's not how our bodies are made i'm sure somebody will bring out the light bulb diet oh, at, some, at some <laughs> point it's got to happen because there's been everything else hasn't there? there's been absolutely everything else and also there is that thing we are sold i mean there is food porn they call it which is mm -hmm. you know all of these lovely uh, glossy glamorous food shows that we see and again that's a they're sending out a weird message some of them yeah yeah and and you know what uh, so that happens on one side you know this kind of aspirational food yeah. and kind of swanning around your beautiful kitchen making beautiful feasts mm. and on the other side of things there's this real devaluing of any food that doesn't fit that model so I, I actually some people quite recently were being really dismissive about ready meals yeah which actually like the way that so many people sustain themselves mm. and get a hot meal in at the end of the day so yeah, yeah. it's important not to kind of succumb to that snobbery yeah and don't because sometimes sometimes you know I love takeaways i love yes. curries i love pizzas you know now and again a hamburger's all right yeah. it's okay yes. but we beat ourselves up about it and say oh, no 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 i can't possibly have that my body's a temple yes <laughs> yeah and do you know when you do that you make your body like a constant work in progress mm -hmm. it'll never be finished mm -hmm. it'll never be perfect and which is crazy yeah. absolutely crazy what sort of reaction have you had to this so far it's been really really yeah. lovely i'm not really surprised lovely. i've been so delighted because Actually, some of the people we've got in contact have been people who had eating disorders or even if they've not had eating disorders, just people who were so anxious about food and so stressed yeah. about what they should and shouldn't be eating. And they've said they're be they've been feeling more bolstered to just follow their appetite and sure. eat what makes them feel good. It's very honest oh, and it's very funny as well, actually. And there's some recipes in there too, which are crackers, as you would expect. But you've talked yourself about the fact that you did have an eating disorder when you were younger as well. Yes. But do you know what triggered that? Have you any idea what made you succumb to that no not really it was it was so many things it was it was being an anxious and depressed teenager it was all the pressures that kind of bear down on teenage yeah. girls in particular as well and it just happens just as it happens with so many people mm. actually one of the reasons it took me so long to get help was because my eating disorder didn't conform to that right. so sometimes i would eat too much sometimes i would be really nervous about what the right foods were sometimes i would eat and then have to exercise you know all of these are disordered eating and it's mm. important that people can recognize that so they can get the help they need no exactly and i think that uh, that will resonate with so so many people now you're getting married soon i believe i am who's going to make the cake well <laughs> <laughs> are you going to make your own cake because i would be if i was a cake maker yeah. i would be so nervous yeah. i would be making you get look there you are yeah gorgeous there we are. Oh, congratulations that's thank brilliant. you no i'm not making the cake are i'm not too much putting myself pressure? through that no no <laughs> <laughs> but whoever does it good luck to them is what i see good luck to them so ruby from now i mean wh where do you see things going from now obviously we know you from bake off we've, we've yeah. seen the, the cookbooks that you've done this one is more about as we said about relationship with food although there yes. are recipes in here as well do you see yourself as a sort of pioneer do you see yourself as somebody who's who wants to say to people it's okay Stop being so anxious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish I wasn't a pioneer. This stuff should be obvious, I mean, you know, it I really know. should be. I, I wish I didn't right. have to write this book in a sense, but unfortunately there are so many conflicting messages thrown at us about food, and, and so this book had to be written in yeah. a sense as an antidote to all that stress and anxiety.